folks and welcome to this microbiology video where we are going to walk you through the process of simple staining coming from both an auger plate and a broth culture. Now the first thing you're going to notice that's different is that we're going to employ a needle probe here when we are collecting our culture from the plate. But first thing first, we need to get our slide ready. Okay. The way we're going to do that is we're going to take our loop, our inoculating loop, make sure it's sterile first just to be safe. Okay, and then we're going to use that to transfer water from this sterile deionized water and put a little bit on our slide and spread it out, okay? And that's where we're going to add our culture to from the plate in just a little bit, all right? And while this is finished cooling, I'm gonna go ahead and open up our plate here just so it's ready and open the plate and get it ready while that's cooling okay now that this is cool we can come into our sterile water get a little bit of water on the loop and come in and even though I said spread it's not really a spread it's just a kind of move around to get it on to the plate off the loop might have to get another one or two just to get a large enough droplet essentially on the slide to work with. Okay? Now, we haven't worked with bacteria, but just for good practice, go ahead and sterilize your loop again. And again, be careful where you set it down because it's still hot while it cools. Now we're going to sterilize our needle okay this is what we're going to use to collect our colony culture from the plate now the reason why we use a needle is so that we don't remove the entire colony we want to leave a majority of the colony behind so we can come back and test it again later or use it for another culture all right but before you do that and while this is cooling what we're going to do is we're going to identify the colony that we want to select so simply come in with a marker on the back side of the plate. We're gonna collect from this guy, that red colony there, so that now when we flip it, we can see it. And the other benefit for that is after we finish doing all of our work here with the staining, we're gonna forget which colony we pulled from. This way we can come back and know exactly which colony we just stained. So this is cooled now. All right, and for good practice, I'm gonna to touch the edge of the plate just to make sure that it's cool, all right? And then come in and touch the very, very edge of that colony. Again, we're not wanting to collect the whole colony, just enough. Take that inoculate and mix it around on that little bit of water that we put on the slide spread it around so that water can then eventually evaporate off, okay? Now, there's still bacteria on this needle, so I need to make sure I not uh, sterilize it. Now we're essentially done with the needle. Set it down and let it cool. And I'm gonna go ahead and tape up the plate just for good practice. Now, this loop should still be sterile, but just in case, because we've been talking, good practice, always sterilize before you use it. Let it cool. And now we're gonna use the loop to bring a culture from a broth onto the slide. Notice that we're not going to be bringing water, sterile water onto the slide because this is already a liquid culture. We don't need to mix up a solid culture on the slide. The reason why we use water for the auger plate is because it's a solid culture and even though we've only taken a little bit, microscopically the bacteria is going to remain a giant clump. So if we add it into water and mix it around, that's going to uh, dilute it out some so we can actually see the individual bacteria. This should be cool now, so I'm going to simply using sterile technique, collect some culture. And 
And now, with that liquid from the broth, simply spread it out across the slide. And you may or may not be able to see it, but we already have most of our auger plate dry. At this point, we are going to take a break and wait for these to air dry and we'll come back. All right, so we're back. We have had our uh, bacterial cultures uh, evaporate dry on our slides and now what we want to do is heat fix them. The reason why we want to heat fix them is to secure them to the slide so that as we add more liquid such as the stain and then rinse the stain off with water, as those liquids pass over the bacteria are less likely to fall off of the slide. Okay, so how we do that? Best practice is to get a slide holder, come at it from the side of your label, Take two hands here. There we go. And simply pass it over the flame five times. One, two, three, four, five. All right. And we will want to do that for the other slide as well. Now you're going to be tempted to touch that glass right after to help get it off the slide holder, but I'm going to warn you it's going to be hot, so be careful. One, two, three, four, five. The other thing to watch out for is some of these slide holders lose some of their tension and occasionally slides will slip right off. So be mindful of that as you are moving your slide back and forth over the flame. Okay. So now that we've heat fixed our bacteria to the slide, we're gonna come in with our simple dye, in this case, methylene blue. And it's a simple process of just collecting some drops in the droplet uh, file, in the dropper, and adding them over where you have added bacteria. It could take as few as one drop or as many as five or 10, depending on how big of an area you've stained. You just want to make sure that it is covered. Now, the important thing to note is that because these are heat fixed, the bacteria should technically be dead, right? But good sterile technique practices is to never touch the tip of the drop, dropper to the culture, okay? Now, once you have the droplet there, you're gonna take your timer, set it for one minute, and we will simply wait for that to finish. But this is a demonstration video, we're not gonna wait. We're gonna assume that minute is gone, okay? And once that one minute passes, you're simply going to pick up your slide, all right? Now careful, this is dye, so if you don't wanna risk getting dye on your fingers, make sure you're working with gloves. And you're gonna bring the, uh, the nozzle of the of the water bottle to the edge, and you're gonna tilt the slide, and you're not going to directly spray water on the culture. You're simply going to run it back and forth across the top and tilt the slide to get all the edges as best you can. All right. Set that back down for a moment. Let's do the other one. Never ever spray the culture directly because this water does come out with a little bit of force and the next thing you know you've sprayed your bacteria off even though you've heat fixed them. Okay. The last step is going to be to blot dry your slide. Now to blot dry your slide do you use bibulbous paper or uh, bibulous paper. You do not want to accidentally grab lens paper. Pay attention, because they're both in similar looking booklets. You can tell the difference based on the uh, texture and there's gonna be dried stain in the book as well. Okay, so pay attention. Don't go blot and dry with lens paper. Set your book open, all right? Take your slides and simply set them so a little bit 
of the slide hangs off the edge. Typically, you want just your label to hang off the edge and close the book and simply pat dry. You do not want to pull the slide out. You will leave your bacteria behind and have nothing to look at under the scope. If it's still not dry enough, simply move the slides down a little bit and repeat. You now have simply stained bacteria slides for view under a microscope.